I'm being interested. Some interest? Oh, who doesn't really care? Just here for the drums. Okay, <laughs> cool. And um, well, thank you for coming. And um, if you have any questions, we'll get to them at the end. But I'll just give a presentation first. So I think what we'll start with at the moment is the four basic vegan food staples. So um, I've been vegan 20 years. Still alive. Still get enough protein. Still get enough iron and calcium. So you can get all of these things as long as you make sure that you include specific things in your diet. So I'm going to go over four vegan food staples. And if you get these in your diet, you should be able to get the majority of nutrients, vitamins and minerals that you need. So, we're going to start off with fruits and vegetables. Who here has had a fruit before? Or a vegetable before? Wow, you're one quarter of the way for being vegan then. So you've had already something that's vegan in your lifetime. What about um, nuts and seeds? Who has peanut butter for example? Um, I love tahini, that's from sesame seeds. So you've already got two out of the four things that vegans need. Um, so we've covered fruit and veg, nuts and seeds. There's also grains, and I would include pseudo grains in that. So who's had rice before? Who likes rice? Okay, and there's other things like quinoa, for example, amaranth. Um, there's some things you may not have heard of before, and they would be what I'd class as pseudo grains, because they're not really grains, they're actually seeds, but we use them as a grain. And there's lots of other things as well, like polenta, and barley, oats, these are all grains. And um, the other fourth staple is pulses, legumes you, and beans. So for example, soy, tofu, tempeh, I love those, edamame. If you've ever been to any sort of Asian restaurant and have a snack beforehand, that's really high in protein. And that's the, the real soybean before anything's happened to it. And um, what about people that like baked beans, for example? So that's, that's already a bean. And so if you have said yes to every single one of those things I've just said, so I said fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, Seeds, grains and beans, legumes and pulses. You, uh, do you understand all those four basic things that you need to be consuming? Now this is if you consume a um, well balanced, so not just having the same thing every day, even though some people do like mangoes quite a lot. Uh, you don't need to be having 50 mangoes a day. You can have so many other things. And um, as long as you're having all these things, you should be able to get the majority of vegan nutrients. There's a couple things I would add there, is vitamin B12. And there's people that are not vegan, as well as vegan, who have this deficiency a lot. So this is one thing that you would have to supplement. So just keep that in mind. And depending on, you know, if you're pregnant or expecting to be pregnant or an athlete or anything like that, you may need different amounts of different um, vitamins and So um, who wants to hear my vegan transition story? Let's talk about that. So, um, when I was in year 10 at school, um, we, my family, we always used to have a leg of lamb, roast leg of lamb, every Saturday night. And um, it was called a leg of lamb, so I knew it was from a lamb's leg. And um, just one night I asked my mum, because my sister and I liked a particular piece of the lamb's leg, I said, what is that piece? And my mum said, it's the Achilles tendon. And I looked down, I've got one of those. I looked down and I was like, I've got an Achilles tendon. I'm about to eat someone else's Achilles tendon. And that was when I just went, oh my gosh, there's, and I linked the life that once was to the death that I was about to consume. And that was my sort of light bulb moment. And after that, I stopped eating red meat and um, then we looked after some chickens at a camp that I went on in year 10. So then I stopped eating white meat. And then um, after school, um, I found out about the dairy and the egg industries. And the reason I went vegetarian first was because I didn't want any animals to die just for me and for me just to be consuming them. 
So when I found out that the dairy and the egg industries are just as bad and just as horrific for animals as killing them, I decided to be vegan. So that's why I'm vegan. And that and I just celebrated my 20th year vegan in January. So a lot of things have changed since then. Um, it was quite boring at um, you know the supermarkets. You're lucky if you got soy milk. You were lucky if you went to a health food store and there was dark chocolate or carob chocolate. That was pretty much it. There was one brand of ice cream um, around that time, um, but yeah, it was pretty pretty bland, pretty boring. There's a lot of lots more options in supermarkets and um, food stores and health food stores nowadays. And um, has everyone gone down into the food area and had some food already today? Not yet. Food. Good, have to check it out. We've got a couple of um, places down there um, I'll give a shout out to. There's Moo Free Burgers, um, and they have a food cart that goes around certain areas in Brisbane, so check them out. Um, and there's also Farm Animal Rescue, so they rescue some of our animal friends, and they're having a vegan hot dog um, sale, and they've also got a few cupcakes. Hopefully there'll be a few left um, by the time we finish this. And um, also, I'm here on behalf of the Vegetarian Vegan Society of Queensland. I'm the new president, and um, we have a stall um, just down the end. So if you see where the food is, um, just to the right of that is the merchandise section. And we actually have a really big book sale today. So there's heaps of books that are selling for $10 each. So if you want to find out some more about some food, um, environmental aspects, maybe some nice photos of animals, there's a few um, picture books like that, or some of the ethical reasons about why people might choose to become vegan, come and um, buy a couple of books. So I thought I'd just go over a few really simple vegan meals that you could make. So think about those four um, staples that we mentioned before. Let's go through them. What was the first one? Fruits and vegetables, that's right. Who's got my second one? <laughs> Nuts and seeds, grains down the back. What was the last one? Pulses, yeah, cool. Well, we all listen, so we all get the staff for that. That's good. So if we think about those sort of things, um, I just wanted to go through a few really simple vegan meals. So I know, for me, I don't have time to cook all the time, especially not every night. I like to make big batches of food that I can just have um, for the week or freeze for later, and then I make sure that I'm eating properly. And some of these that I do, I love the good stir fry. That's the easiest for me. But you could also make curries and pastas. So for example, there's a really good, I can't, I can't remember the brand, but you get it at Asian grocery stores and it's like a curry sauce. And there's a red, a green, a yellow, and a musaman curry. Does anyone know the one I'm talking about? Do you know the brand name? Yeah, they're really good anyway. <laughs> They're not the I am ones, but it's a different brand. It's a little about that sort of size, but they're very potent too. I like I like chili and I like things hot, so they're, they're quite hot, some of them. So if you get a um, can of that, so that's gonna be our flavor, our taste, that sort of stuff. And we get a can of, say, um, chickpeas, or we can get some tofu, we can get some other bean. And um, we're just going to cook that with, say, coconut milk or coconut cream. If, you, if that's a bit too fatty, you could just add some other plant milk to it. Um, and then um, we could add in some greens, like some kale, some um, uh, spinach leaves, baby spinach leaves. And then what would we serve it with? Some food, some sort of rice, some sort of quinoa. So do you think that's quite easy? I think that's quite easy. And a lot of those things with canned, you can buy beans that are fresh and soak them and cook them yourself as well. So I'm just trying to give you the easiest versions. And then what about pasta? If you've got pasta, just like to cook some pasta in a bit of boiling water, a jar of like a passata sauce or some sort of tomato sauce. Um, you could add some red kidney beans or something like that. And I would always add something green to everything I would make. So if you have that in your head, some, add always something green. And like that's another easy meal, isn't it, to make? 
Um, something also, um, if you if you can cook rice, so if we've got a rice cooker, you can just add a few frozen veggies. Like you can buy at the supermarket to a pack of say um, beans, corn. And if you put that in some rice you cooked, stir it up a bit, add some tofu or some sort of bean, there's like a fry rice. So that's pretty easy as well. And um, they're just some basic sort of things that you can do. And if you're more creative, you can add some more things, you can add some more colours. And I definitely encourage you to be trying to eat all colours of the rainbow. And it just gives you more variety, it gives you more flavour, and it looks pretty too, which always helps. And so from the things I mentioned before, if you try for every meal that you eat to focus on those four vegan staples, and I would also add something else to focus on, which is beans, greens and grains. So if you focus on having a bean and a grain and a grain at most meals, that's a healthier way to eat and it's a way to make sure you're getting those nutrients. Does everyone understand that? So I might talk about a few of my own favourite foods that I eat on a regular basis. So um, what I've, I've been doing for quite a few years, I've spoken at a vegan bloggers conference a few years in Portland, Oregon, and I do a lot of um, speaking all around the world on, on vegan topics and social media marketing, a lot of marketing and online communication. That's my job. And um, so one of the vegan um, bloggers conferences that I went to in Portland, Oregon, um, they served this thing called chia seeds that um, six or seven years ago I'd never heard of. And there's this amazing thing, like what is this beautiful texture, quite unusual. And they made a chia pudding every day for our breakfast as part of um, another um, lot of different foods that we had. And um, so has anyone heard of chia seeds before? Does anyone use it? Yeah, cool. So um, chia seeds will, if you put liquid to them, they'll absorb whatever you, whatever liquid that you add to them. They're really good in omega threes in particular too, and they're good to sprinkle on top of, say, smoothies or bowls or cereal or something like that. Also, so um, I make a chia pudding, and I have that. I make a big batch of it once a week or once, you know, every week or so. And what I put in that is a cup of chia seeds and a cup of oats and I use one litre of brown rice milk. I prefer brown rice milk to soy milk, but it depends on whatever plant-based milk that you prefer. And I mix that all together and I let it sit for 30 minutes and then that's when it's sort of all mixed together a bit, it's you know, um, got the water into it. And then I add some frozen berries. So there's packs that you can buy at the supermarket, so you can buy them in bulk, for maybe 400, 500 grams, and mix that all through. And that's my breakfast set for the week. And um, I'll add something on top of that. So I like coconut flakes, I like um, cacao nips, and pepitas. Pepitas are pretty high in iron too, and protein. So I would add those on top, and that's what I have for breakfast. Another thing I like if I have some time in the morning is to make a scrambled tofu. Has anyone had scrambled tofu before? Um, does it sound a bit odd, scrambled tofu? It's like maybe scrambled egg, how um, other people um, would eat scrambled egg. So it's the same sort of thing. You're trying to aim for that same sort of consistency maybe, or the look. So um, there's a few different types of scrambled tofu. So you can get hard tofu, you can get silken tofu, which is a softer version. And you can even get different types of silken tofu that are hard or soft. So um, I normally like using the harder um, tofu to make scrambled tofu, but a few of my friends just like the silken tofu, so it's like a more pretty sort of texture. So you literally crumble the tofu in your hands into a bowl and you add whatever sort of seasonings you want to it. So for me when I cook, the seasonings that I love is nutritional yeast. Has anyone heard of that before? 
So nutritional yeast from molasses, but there's no yeast. It's, there's no leavening ability whatsoever. And it's a cheesy sort of alternative, and it's a flake, mostly in flakes. So you can sprinkle that using as parmesan. You can use it to make a cheese sauce as well. So my flavorings that I use, nutritional yeast, chili or chili flakes, soy sauce, amaranth, or, um, no, sorry, it was called tamarind, or um, something salty like that. And I would just mix that in. And with scrambled tofu, I would add some turmeric to that as well. And um, that's probably about it. That's all I would need. Because I, I said before about having greens in most meals, I would add some um, baby spinach into that as well. And that scrambled tofu, mix it up for a while. Serve that on some sourdough, some rye bread, something like that. Easy meal. And um, what, has anyone else, would anyone else add any other ingredients up? Yeah, parsley. Parsley, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Coriander, yes. That's quite a, um, a divisive ingredient. Coriander, I love coriander. What would you add? You can get it there. Oh yeah, the black salt. So if no one's heard about it, black salt actually has a sulfur, sulfur sort of taste. So you need a really tiny bit, but it will give that egg-like sort of flavour to to what you're making as well. Okay, what do uh, what do other people have for breakfast? Show us now. See if I can hear. What what is that sago? Sago, yeah, you could have sago. Yep. Yep. That sounds good. You can make that breakfast for me tomorrow. Yep. What would you have? Yeah, that's good. That's an easy one too. So soaking something overnight. Oats, king one, also good to soak overnight. Um, and just yeah, putting some sort of fruit on top, maybe a garlic or some sweetener if you need it. A um, bit of coconut yogurt or, yeah, you know, little things that even. What about making your own um, uh, easily or something like that? So, you know, you've got some oats, have some seeds, um, some sultanas or some dried fruit. Just mix it all in together, add some of your plant milk. That's quite, quite easy to do as well. Um, for lunch, I normally have a lot of uh, leftovers. I love making a lot of food so that I can eat more than once with that meal. Because um, I just don't like cooking every single day. Because I just don't think that's effective use of my time. Um, and I also love hummus. Who else loves hummus? Anything with chickpeas, anything with chickpeas, anything with tiny meal, I'm going to love. So you combine that. But, and that's really easy to make. Has anyone made their own hummus before? Yeah, so it's just you know, a bit of chickpeas, some tahini, um, put some oil in if you like, lemon or lime, um, a bit of pepper or salt, am I missing anything? Uh, garlic, yep. That's the main ingredient. And onion powder. Yeah. Put out that too. And I just like covering that with some, like a, one of those rice things or something. I'll have a few of those as a snack or for lunch sometimes. Um, but yeah, for dinner, like what we were talking about before, curries, pastas, and stir fries. So stir fry that I love, I love, um, has anyone been to, into Melbourne There's a place called Veggie Bar in Brunswick? Yeah, I love Veggie Bar. So there's this um, mostly green stir fry that they make there that I adore. And it's got this amazing tahini dressing on top. And so it's pretty much kale, um, snow peas, zucchini, and broccoli with um, tempeh, which I'm also obsessed with, and it's on brown rice with the tahini dressing. So it's really simple, but I love all those things that I just mentioned. And um, yeah, I think if you focus on dressings, that can really bring a meal to life. So um, around summer, I was really getting into Wait, making please, bowls, like Buddha bowls or dragon bowls. Does anyone know what they are? It's like a, a bowl that you're trying to combine different types of food into one. It's a healthier way to eat. So you focus on, I would include cooked things and not cooked things. And a lot of people put probiotics or some or something like um, this time kimchi or Children's something like that in as well. So I would always start with a bed of something green, like a baby spinach, and then I would have a cooked um, quinoa or, or a quinoa and brown rice mix. I just put a bit of that as the bed.
and then I would add other things. So you can grate some carrot, grate some sort of vegetable that you like. Um, you could also, sometimes I would cook like a batch of tofu or tempeh, so that would already be, be cooked. So you just throw a few of those bits in there and you just add some sprouts or anything else. So, and that's normally, what have I got in the fridge? Let's put it all together in a bowl. So that's pretty simple to do as well. And um, so yeah, stir fry is pretty good. And I really like um, just simple, simple sort of things that I can freeze as well, that will freeze quite easily. Because one day I'm going to um, launch a vegan frozen food range, but we're not adding that to my list at the moment, so I get too excited. Um, but yeah, so um, they're the things that I like to eat quite regularly. And if I go out, I really like Mexican food. Who doesn't like Mexican food, really? I think Mexican food is pretty awesome. It's Thai food, Indian food. A lot of Asian food um, is vegetarian or vegan or can be vegan. Just like be careful with um, some of the oils or some of the seasonings that, that they can use because sometimes oyster sauce, for example. And But um, that curry paste I was talking about before, the reason I discovered that was I was at a Thai place in, in Fortitude Valley one night for dinner, just asking about the sauce, what they used, and they said, oh, hey, I'll go and get it and I'll show it to you. And we saw the the um, sauce and loved it so buy that now so just you know feel free to ask questions like what what's in this is there any like is there do you use oyster sauce do you use fish sauce can you please take that out or can you just use this sort of sauce instead or would you have any soy sauce you could use instead of oyster sauce just things like that and the more that you ask and the more that you express these sort of things the easier it will become for you to do that as well um, what about juices and smoothies? Uh, does anyone have them quite regularly? For, yeah, an easy way to get especially greens into the diet. So for, I know um, with this whole craze of all the blenders, a heap of my friends who are not vegan and who don't eat fruit and vegetables, literally, and um, they're very excited about this smoothie thing. And they're like, have you ever this Ninja Bullet or whatever brand that's um, exciting at the moment and they're like I put all these green stuff in and it makes me <laughs> this juice and I'm like oh good good for you that's exciting <laughs> but they because they would not eat vegetables normally and they wouldn't eat anything green and it's just a great way of getting greens into your diet and um, just make sure you focus on more vegetables rather than fruit. So have like a banana or an apple or something that is sweet in there, but don't have too much fruit in your smoothie. And um, yeah, I would focus on greens and berries, also very good. Um, some sort of liquid, so like a nut milk. Um, I like using coconut water. You can even just use water. We did a few food demos yesterday. We were making some fun kids smoothies and we just made, we just used water with them. Um, you could also add nuts in as well, like almonds, cashews, something like that. And that will give it a bit of a thicker sort of consistency. Avocados also will work well with that. There's a place, Kiss My Berry, up, I think it's up that way or that way. And they made this amazing um, like chocolate avocado smoothie. So anyone wants a tip of a smoothie to have, that's my top tip for the day for you. And you can put flavourings into your smoothies. You can add, say, um, protein powder. Um, there's a great brand called Prana On that's a Queensland-based brand that's um, going throughout um, overseas now. So they're doing very well. But you don't need to have that. If you're exercising a lot, if you're trying to bulk up, if you're a bodybuilder, they would be a good thing to add to your protein, to your um, smoothie. So, um, as I was saying before, about 20 years ago, there weren't many vegan options around. You had to really go searching. And um, one of the things that I loved about being vegan was before my, my food was quite limited. It was, you know, the bit of animal flesh and the bit of, you know, a couple of bits of fruit, um, with veggies on the side. Um, but that was pretty much it. And those, those um, vegetables were quite bland as well, the way they were cooked. And um, so when I became vegan, it was the opposite way. So it was more 
vegetables and I also learned a heap about different types of grains, different types of foods. Like I'd never heard of okra before, for example. Um, and there's just so many great things. Kale, you know, it was really hard to buy kale in Brisbane a few years ago. You could only get it at um, some of the farmers markets. Now it's everywhere. And um, there's just so many things and I really hope that you um, think outside of the square and try new things all the time. And um, if you don't know how to use it, like go, I go to a lot of Chinese um, supermarkets, Indian supermarkets, Tongan, Korean, all those sort of big supermarkets that have so many different things. And if you don't know what something is, just say, oh, hey, what's this? How would I cook with them? How would you cook with them? And you'll get some great tips. Or even, you know, Google nowadays, you can find so many things on YouTube as well. And um, there's so many other alternatives and vegan foods that are not necessarily whole foods, um, but they're very good for some people to include in their diets. So there's a lot of um, vegan options, say cheeses, ice creams, and mock meats, that if you are transitioning from a non-vegan diet into vegetarian or a vegan diet, you could probably be using some of these alternatives. And I would, for example, mock meats. I really don't like mock meats that much. I wouldn't have them much in my diet at all. A lot of my vegan friends have a lot of them in their diets. And I would use these as a transition type food. So if, you're, if you really love, say, spaghetti bolognese, and you want to make your own spaghetti bolognese, it's a cruelty-free version. You can use TPP mints, for example, or you could use some sort of other mock meat where you could be using that instead of the animal parts. Yeah. So mock meat, most of them are based from wheat or from soy. So that is another um, reason mock meats might not be good for people is if they have allergens yeah, to wheat or to soy, because both of those are high allergen foods. Uh, for some people and so yeah just be just be careful with what with what the ingredients are and some of the um maybe cheaper versions of mock meat have a lot of fillers in them too that i wouldn't really encourage people to eat but they're but just try it there's you know like tofu some tofu is not that great it depends on how you cook it depends what you marinate with it um just try the different ones that are available Burgers. A lot of my friends love the burgers, they have that. And 
And we also have Charlie's. Has anyone heard of Charlie's or Charlie's Raw Squeeze? Yeah, you know? So, um, they have uh, quite a few vegan pantries. Not as big as the other two, but they have them attached to some of their raw food bars. And that. So, if you'd like to maybe support vegan businesses, the non-supermarket places, they might be a good place to start. And you know, a lot of things you can buy online nowadays too. Um, has, do many people go out to eat at restaurants or vegan places? Yeah, I like going out to eat too. And there's so many, so many places to eat. Um, I love this. In Brisbane, we've got quite a few. We've got the Lovely Parts at um, Mount Gravatt. Does anyone know that one? Yeah, so we um, as um, the Vegetarian Vegan Society, we've actually got a lending library there as well. So next time you go to Loving Hut, you can have a look at our library of um, vegan books. If you want to borrow something, take it with you and bring it back next time. Great that. And um, Loving Hut's great around West End and Veggie Rama, Veggie Me. Veggie Rama is actually in my centre as well. And we've got the square. What else have we got? Anyone want to yell out? So maybe I'll be in here. Gavinzas, yeah, the heaps of Gavinzas around. Gavinzas is here today as well. Just had popped a before. Um, any other favourites anyone got? The 
shades of options we had even 10 years ago were pretty bad to some of the vegan shades options that we have now. And just keep in mind, these things are always changing, they're always evolving. So something that you might not have liked, like, um, you know, the cheese that was really bad 20 years ago, there's a really good one that just came out next week. So just be open-minded and, you know, try all the different things that are coming. Um, and does anyone bake here? We've got any bakers in the room? Ooh, that's exciting. What do you like baking? Granola. Granola? Which one? I have a granola. I have a nut bar and granola. That sounds good. What about you? Coconut flour biscuits. That sounds good. With carrot chips. That sounds good. Who was the other baker? What do you bake? What do you like? Banana Thank you so much, Charlie International Social Academy, for another year of amazing performance. Vegan Can chocolate please cake. Give them so another good. big well, round I'll have one of each of those for tomorrow, please. Yeah, yeah, Can no, drop it off at the store. So there's a lot of ways that you can still bake and still be vegan. Um, does anyone know about using um, alternatives to eggs? Have you heard about that before? We chia seeds is awesome, flax seeds. What we were talking about before, that the chia seeds absorb whatever you put with them and liquid, so the flax seeds. So if you think about those sort of things, that's like a binding ingredient that you're using. So you can, I normally use like a little coffee grinder and put the chia or the flax seeds in, grind that up with, I think, I think I do off the top of my head, like one tablespoon of the seeds or four tablespoons of water. What would you do something like that? Thank you all for yeah. coming. So we something like that. Enjoy the show. And that and is worth wonderful afternoon at the 2017 And there's a lot of other baking alternatives you can use. Bananas, for example, apple sauce. Just depending on what you're making and whether or not you want to have that flavour in in whatever you're making. So yeah, have a and do a bit of research. We've got at the Vegetarian Vegan Society store, we've got a few um, handouts that you can take as well with some recipes. So if you want any um, tips for that, have a look. And I've got a little um, it's um worldwide vegan baking sale at the moment. Worldwide vegan bake sale at the moment, um, from the 15th to the 30th of April every year, and they include. Um, all over the world you can come and join and do a bake sale that raises money for your local animal sanctuary or whatever charity you like. And so that's one of the things that's happening at the Cruelty Free Shop today, they've got a bake sale down there. And um, I created um, a zine, has anyone heard of a zine before? It's like a magazine that you sort of make and you do it yourself. So I created this zine that shows um, information on how to put on your own bake sale and how to use um, different alternatives for baking. So if you, have a, if you look at vivalavegan.net, um, the ve a bake, baking sale museum or something like that, it should come up on Google. So yeah, I've got a lot of how-to videos and articles and recipes on my website, vivalavegan.net, and I've been running that for over a decade. And yeah, um, 10 years ago there weren't many vegan lifestyle websites, which for new vegans, is a bit hard to understand, but there really wasn't much, you know, from 10 years ago, 20 years ago. So there's a lot of information on there, and I've also got um, a lot of videos on YouTube, so check those out. And yeah, make sure you come and say hi to us at the stall, um, have um, some great food here while you're here. Um, come and have a chat afterwards, and um, I might answer some questions now if anyone has any questions. We've got a new V in three weeks. Welcome to the plot. The most common mistake in regards to food, or just generally? Um, I think maybe when I well, when I first went um, vegan or vegetarian, I just stopped eating meat and just ate vegetables. So I didn't know, I had no idea about tofu or tempeh or beans or anything like that because my family didn't eat those things. So that I would say that would be the biggest thing for most people. You're just taking out what you used to eat and thinking that everything else that 
isn't the meat or whatever will be enough to satisfy your nutrition your nutrition needs so if you keep in mind the things that I mentioned and to think outside of the box try new things and make sure you're getting protein from other sources um, then you you will be fine but that would be the biggest thing you don't find that most people also include honey for getting that extra and the that's a very good one yes we just had a mention about honey at the front and um does anyone want to um, have a stab about, um, probably stab not the best way, does anyone want to have a guess why um, honey might not be vegan? Exactly, so, um, or insects, so little honey bees, um, they create um, honey so that they don't starve over the winter months and um, when people consume their honey you're literally stealing it from them and um, there are people who look after their bees as much as there are people who look after their animals but as vegans we choose not to use any animals for any reason no matter how well they're looked after so veganism is not just about your diet or a religion it's a way of life that a lot of us commit to because we don't believe in using and abusing animals quick one now any um other questions at the back what's the difference between seeds and grains the difference between seeds and grains hmm um i guess it's the way they're used um i think there'd be a better biological way of answering that that i don't know what it would be does anyone want to add anything to that i guess grains most of them have to be cooked or at least soaked um nuts are pretty readily available to eat um and it would be i guess what what components they're made up of which is why you would need both of them in your diet is that where you're coming from why do you would need both of them? I'm not entirely sure about that, so it might have to be something you ask Dr. Google, but yeah. What were you going to Yeah, also wine making processes use uh, animal byproducts. Who does? Wine making. Wine making? Yeah. Wine making can use animal um, byproducts, yes. Um, but I'm sure there's an app for that that you can check um, what wines are vegan and not. I personally don't consume alcohol, so I don't really know what wines are vegan or not. Um, but yeah, there's something called Instaglass that um, is used in the filtration process to make wines and some beer. So that's like the um, insides of fish guts or fish bladders and stuff like that. So there's a lot of things that are used that you wouldn't even think about that they get used. And it's just as a waste product and they want to use it for something else and make a bit of money for selling it on to someone else. So yeah. Did that answer the question? Cool. Did anyone have any other questions? Would you have to eat rock oil to kind of regulate maybe this diet? Because it's not as calorie dense. Yeah. Yeah, that's another one actually, answering your question as well. So a vegan diet, if it's um, low fat, um, high carb, based on all those, the four vegan staples we mentioned before, if you're um, eating those, you may have to eat a lot more of that, in particular if you're an athlete or a bodybuilder or something like that. So some people who are quite thin by nature, um, might not get enough food, so they might need to eat a bit more. But just just try, just see, just see what happens. And and on that note as well, 20 years ago, if you went vegan, you would probably lose weight. Nowadays, because of all the other vegan options we have that are not so healthy, you may not be losing weight. So keep in mind that it might not be something that to promote that well because you can lose weight on a vegan diet but it depends what you're eating so all the processed stuff that's awesome and it's good to have and it's good transitional stuff we don't need it all the time and even all that sugar that i like to eat that's in all the, the sweets that we have all the time don't really need it so yeah just keep those sort of things in mind too I've converted a lot of my favourite recipes to be. So I was baking muffins and cakes, and more muffins and more cakes and more biscuits. And, and you had to eat them, didn't you? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. 
because yeah, that's you know, just because it's vegan doesn't mean it's healthy. You know, so keep that in mind. The the old way of the vegan diet, like 20 years ago, definitely healthy. And in that, I mean, whole foods, a low fat vegan diet is very healthy. Um, and you you have everything you need from the plant kingdom, other than good good girl stuff. And um, but yeah, and and because it's vegan, you know, you'd be like, oh, it's vegan, it'll be fine. I just got excited. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I found out replacing it. Yeah. And then vegan versions of these foods are definitely healthier than the other versions as well. Um, but yeah, some of them are still full of fat, some of them are still full of sugar. So keep those things in mind. You're still, you're still awesome. What do you have for snacks? For snacks. I like the hummus um, with crackers or something like that. Um, but see, my issue is I have too many sugar snacks and I'm trying to think of more um, savoury snacks, so any ideas would be good. Um, kale chips or dehydrated kale, that, that's good. If you've got a dehydrator or we'll just put the um, oven down quite low. Um, I like those little brown rice crackers um, and a bit of cheese or something on that, like a fake cheese or something's good or hummus. Um, some crackers is good. Um, I like yeah, I, I like kale by itself with hummus. So a lot of people have to cook their kale, but I like it like that. Um, I'm trying to think. You can, you can buy the boxes of frozen snacks and then vegetarians um, for afterwards. Yeah, there's heaps of frozen um, like snacks, sort of party party sort of food that you can buy as well. That's, that's pretty good. Um, does anyone have any favourite snacks they want to share? Babunosh, that's good, yeah. Beetroot dips, yeah. Get out the food processor or the high speed blender and make some dips. We have that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. I would add white beans to any dip I make actually, to be honest, just to bulk it up a bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love that Brisian mix, is anyone that Indian mix? I like that too, that's pretty good. Um, yeah. The details. Oh, popcorn, yeah, popcorn's awesome. I yeah, like popcorn too, with a bit of coconut oil, nutritional yeast, bit of salt, very good. Like old school in a pot. No, I haven't done that yet, but sound <laughs> good. Cool. Well, I might wrap it up, everyone. Thanks so much for the interaction today, and um, we dealt with the um, the noise quite well, I thought. You know, we could mostly hear each other. So um, yeah, have a look on my website, vivalavegan.net. Um, Viva La Vegan and myself, Lee Chantel, we're on all social media channels: so Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Google Plus, Instagram, um, Pinterest. Um, so you can find them on there too if you like. Um, if you have any friends coming tomorrow or you'd like to come back and see me, I'm hosting two food demos. They're on at, if you read my sign. We've got raw vegan sweets Sunday 2 to 4 p.m. And then we've got Asian inspired raw vegan food Sunday 4 to 5 p.m. And so let your friends know, come along and have We'll do the demos right here, and we'll even have samples you can try. Um, and yeah, make sure you come and see the Vegetarian Vegan of Society, a Vegan Society of Queensland store. Become a member, or always looking for new members. Um, and we've got that book sale as well. We'll come and meet some of our crew. So you know where the food stalls are? If you're looking at the food stalls, they're here, and the merchandise is in the next row. So on the yeah, facing the river, we're number 27. If you're looking for it, so there's like someone selling all um, like toys sort of thing. So we're opposite that, just on the corner. Yeah. I saw, who did I see before, that you that came for an hour's drive to see my talk, so you also get a star for that achievement. So yeah, thanks everyone for attending today, and have a great time at the rest of the festival. I hope you've learned something. Thank you. Yeah.